Assistive Intelligent Robotics Group is all about signal processing and machine learning in order to create um, human-machine interfaces which adapt to the, uh, the needs and the desires of our patients. And we work with human-machine interfaces for assistive robots, all the way from prosthetics to exoskeletal to virtual reality. Our main target groups are uh, people with amputations, people with, who have been hit by a stroke, people with spinal cord injury, all patients who suffer from any motor dysfunction, so people who have lost motor functions in the past due to some condition. We prefer to read signals from the muscles, so the residual activity of muscles. These signals, even after a stroke or even after an amputation, I mean 40 years after an amputation, amputated people still know what they want to do and their muscles act, so to speak, as amplifiers for their intent. So we try to read those signals and convert the signal patterns into actions that our prosthesis or our exoskeleton perform. My research is focused on lower limb prosthetics and orthotics, and we are using EMG signals and other sensor modalities to control adaptive algorithms which automatically tune the impedance of the human joints based on the current activity or other behaviors we can detect from our sensors. Our intent detection algorithms are mainly based on rich regression. That means we only need a couple of seconds to detect and map the human motion intents to certain behaviors we want to inflict later on and also update them over the course of the experiment. So as the people are using this, the algorithm gets better and better and we can adapt it to even more scenarios. Our main goal is to improve the outcome after injury and also after surgery um, in patients with orthopedic injuries, but also pathologies. With this innovative approach, we're really able to adapt and adjust our therapy based on the deficits, but also the process that the patient makes. So using EMG sensors, we will be able to really see how much they fire their muscles, how much strength they've gained. And based on that, we will adjust the support uh, in the brace. So that means patients that are still a little bit behind in terms of their rehabilitation, we're able to support them a little bit more with the motor that is adjusted to the brace in terms of range of motion, but also strength. It's also safe because it senses uh, what the limitations are and we can really set the boundaries for the rehabilitation itself and really personalized and individualized therapy. I'm trying to decode muscle signals from upper limb amputees, so also above elbow amputees to try to give them better control over elbow processes and also hand processes. One challenge is that for above elbow amputees, you only have few muscles left. So there's also not too many muscle patterns you can naturally produce to control so many degrees of freedom you have in an actual hand. Virtual reality is a nice, cheaper opportunity to give amputees easier access to train their muscles and then gain better control and hence also improve like their life quality with having better control over electrical processes again. At the stroke you have a wide heterogeneity of patients, you are very old, but you have also younger patients and they want to do something um, further than routine care. And there I think we have a great opportunity to introduce some technical devices into routine stroke care. So one is the gamification. So we have some kind of virtual reality and some like smaller games. As you know, it's easier to put a task into a game and then to perform it. So I think that will help us for the long-term motivation. We have an exoskeleton, like a robotic prosthesis, which will help you with the movements, especially in the beginning, which will support you. You will have early achievements. And then we have, of course, we have some AI techniques to adapt to the patient. We don't get the function back in every patient, but we can help them to adapt for their routine living. And I think all three steps are very promising for the future. 
So my main focus uh, uh, is uh, in uh, wearable uh, solutions for the extraction of human kinematics, uh, as well as uh, functional electrical stimulation and uh, broadly speaking, musculoskeletal modeling. I also worked with uh, wearable exosuits, which are systems uh, consisting of tendons uh, that can be actuated and pulled in order to exert forces on the wearer and therefore assist movements. In this uh, research, we also design some of our own hardware, uh, such as, for example, this IMU system, uh, which allows us to extract the kinematics of the user and also to an extent their uh, muscular geometry in a, in a very convenient and uh, lightweight package, I would say. So my research is mainly about intuitive robotics control based on biosignals, so how you could move a robot around just by moving your hand um, or moving your legs. This can be used either for assistive devices in for uh, rehabilitation, but also it can be used for industry or surgical purposes where a surgeon can move around different devices, for example, like a CM system. So one part of my research is also about teleimpedance, so how to measure human stiffness based on EMG sensors. And with that, we try to transfer that impedance control to a robot if you want to move fragile objects and in this case, because you're making a soft touch, which is enabling a softer interaction with um, the device and the environment. What we hope to have is a tighter and tighter integration between the patient and the machines, so that our artificial intelligence becomes really transparent. It knows more and more what the patient wants. So you sell a rehabilitation robot to a patient and the robot understands the needs of the patient even when no doctor is around, even when, of course, we engineers are not around. For me, that's the main role of artificial intelligence in medicine in the next couple decades. Thanks for watching, but now an important disclaimer. The content of this video is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Viewers should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice for any medical condition they may have and should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions.